Hey, we here. 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 What up, what up, what up? Welcome to you replay viewers. Welcome to you live viewers. If you're live, say hi. Let them know you're riding by. About to do a couple of follow-up calls. Got about two, three, maybe even four. I don't know. Maybe something else came in today. Several leads came in. Let's see if we can uh, create something from nothing. What's up, Nina? What up, what up, Laura? Double L in the house. Yeah, we're about to do a couple of follow-ups. Let me see what else we got here. I think I've seen some other leads came in today, too. Let's see here. Hope you're having yourself a great day. What up, Lucy? Let's see here. A lead came in four hours ago, too. Let's see, what is that? Over in, I guess that's the Ferguson, 63135. That's some house in Ferguson. Uh, look like they called in from a bandit sign. Bandit sign. A hey, bandit, bandit. They called in from a bandit sign, but I'm not calling them yet. Uh, let's see what else came in today. Another deal came in 63114, one of the hottest zip codes. Uh, let's see here. This house says... They updated the furnace to replace the AC, the water heater, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Look like they no longer need the house because the kids have moved out. What's they call that? An empty nester? So we'll give them a call too here in a little bit. And we got another one here in Florissant. A terms deal. See if the terms make sense on this deal in Florissant. Uh, let's check that one out first. If this video gives you any type of value, you learn anything, even by accident, Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it a share if you care. Let's see here. What's up? What's up? What's up? All right. So let's see here. We're going to give him a call here. What's up, CJ? Let's see here. So we're going to give a call to this one in Florissant first. Three bedroom, two bath, 1050 square feet. Tenant occupied on a Section 8 tenant. Supposed to be moving out or something. Not sure what's the deal with that. We're going to find out from the seller. Um, is that what they owe? O 135? O's 135, 1189 a month. P I T I, principal interest, taxes, and insurance. It's kind of high. Um, what else I know about this house? House in pretty good shape. Other than that, let's see what else we can figure out. What's up, Jazz? What's up, Ernesto? I see you, bro, in Illinois. I got some leads over in Illinois that I've been avoiding, but I think I need to talk to them and send them over to you, Ernesto. You love Illinois. Anybody else love Illinois in here? Make sure you put it in the comments. Let me know you like East St. Louis, any of that stuff. Because I be coming, they be calling, and I be like, meh, meh. You know, I be hesitant, but I need to stop doing it because I'm probably passing on some deals. So we're going to work on this deal here in Florissant first. Let's see here. Let's give them a call and see if we can do something with it all. R-E-I, Drea, what up, what up, what up? How you doing? Let's see here. Give them a call. Record all calls for quality and training purposes. And let's see here. That's right. We stand woke. Thanks for those hearts. Thanks for those likes. Come in swinging on them. That's what I'm talking about. Come in bring some energy because they was falling asleep. They need my I stay woke pillow sleeping like that. Here. All right, let's get this guy a call. Stop playing around. I know how to held y'all off. I want to build up the audience first. You know, that's that's the algorithm for this stuff. You got to have an audience so the people don't come in and say, well, what happened? You got to give it a chance to build up. So here we go. Look like we got about, what, 15 people on so far? So that's not bad. 16 people on point. Let's give them a call. <clears throat> Put on my professional voice. Hello, uh, Tim. Hey, yes, this is Chris. Uh, I was giving you a call back about your house up in Florence, and how are you today? Pretty good, pretty good. Did I catch you at a good time? Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't know. You know, I want to mess up something. So yeah, basically, I just was trying to figure out um, about the house up there. Uh, there's a tenant in there still, or did uh, did they move out already, or? 
The tenant is still there, and that's a Section 8 tenant. Do they have a plan on moving out or something, or what is their plan? Oh, okay. So you can give him a 30 day notice. How do you think she'll feel about that? <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> so you the boss, huh? <laughs> okay. I know that's right. So yeah, cause that, that would, uh, what are they paying there now? The tenant that's in there? 11.45. Oh, okay. Getting good money over there. Okay. So yeah, we 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 normally put some a different program on people. We don't really use uh you know uh, section eight tenants. We usually try to get them vacant or we put somebody in there that can get it cashed out. That's normally how we would work. Um, so basically, I don't know if you were told or not, but we buy houses all the time over St. Louis uh, for cash, regardless of how much you owe. And so um, in this situation, you still owe about one thirty five. Is that correct? a little less than that okay not a problem so i mean uh and the payments i had down here was 11.89 is that right 11.88 we saved a dollar okay yeah yeah a whole dollar <laughs> and so um does that include the principal interest taxes and insurance no that's just the principal and interest principal and yeah, interest So principal, interest, taxes, and insurance is paid separately. Is that what you're saying? Insurance is paid separately. The taxes that's included in, okay, mortgage note is a thousand dollars. Insurance is paid Oh, they financed it into the loan. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so, so insurance though, are they, is that payment covering insurance as well or no? No, no, no. There's not insurance. Oh, okay. So that would change the numbers a little bit. What does the insurance uh, normally cost you about? About $85 a month. $85 a month. So in reality, your payment is eleven eighty eight plus eighty five every month. Yeah. Eleven four. So eleven eighty eight plus eighty five every month. So okay. Okay, so that changes the numbers a little bit. Um, plus eighty five. So twelve seventy three is what you're paying out every month, approximately. Yeah. Okay. Um, so how do you think, uh, what, what would be like the best case scenario for you for this whole deal here? Uh, that I'm done with it. You're done with it. Over and done, no more. Over and done and not messing around with it. Because we do have a way to buy your house. Uh, the only thing is that the loan will stay in your name temporarily until we get it cashed out sometime in the future. Um we would put somebody else in there, not a Section 8 tenant. We would put a person in there that we would help to get qualified to actually cash the house out and buy it with their own loan and cash you out of it. And we would make some money on the back end on a deal like that as well. Is that something you'd be interested in? So, yeah, so basically we close the deal through a real estate attorney and through the local title company so that everything's disclosed and in writing. Uh, they put everything so it actually protects you in the deal to make it so that you'll see that, you know, you'll have a note. We'll we'll write it up in a way that so that in the event we don't make a payment, you can foreclose to take the house back in the event you had to. But we don't we don't see that foregoing. But in the event you did, you do have some type of protection will help you in the deal. Uh, typically, uh, a, f a couple of years. It usually doesn't take too long. I don't want to give a promise that I can't deliver on, but I will tell you this. We would cover the uh, monthly payment 
on your behalf. Also be res responsible for all of the maintenance and repairs of the property going forward. And uh, basically we would make sure that uh, everything is taken care of so you wouldn't have any calls about tenants, toilets, termites, or anything in regards to the house if everything you know works out. I'm still looking at the numbers here now to make sure it would make sense. But uh, you know, if we were able to make everything work, we would put the deal together so that it would protect you in the deal. Oh, we can get the deal closed up uh, pre pretty soon. We can close whenever you're ready. The only thing that looks like will be an issue, that could be an issue, is more so that tenant. That, that's, that's probably the number one thing that I see that could, you know, cause a little curveball or cause any kind of delay or any type of things like that would be the tenant. Does she uh, or he or she, do they know that you're selling the house? Okay, and they and they can usually just do it. I don't. I haven't dealt with Section Eight like that, so they can get them out of there that quick, huh? Get them in a new place and thing. Well, they have a voucher to, to find a place. So they can get them. Right, right. Has she been giving you any hard time or anything since she's been there? Or he, he or she? Is it a she or a he? Yeah, it's a she. Oh, okay. Uh, she. Oh, wow. You, you got know, one of those, uh, huh? Yeah, I think it's a, you know, metal case. So, but, and then, you know, it's all well, the, uh, the service is draining, so, okay, you've been here a whole year, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to have to take you to the hospital. Well, I don't have to take you to the hospital. Well, I'm going to have to take you to the hospital. Well, I'm going to have to take you to the hospital. Well, I'm going to have to take you to the hospital. Well, I'm going to have to take you to the hospital. Well, I'm going to have to take you to the hospital. Well, I'm going to have to take you to the hospital. Well, I'm going to have to take you to the hospital. Well, I'm going to have to take you to the hospital. Well, I'm going to have to take you Okay. Oh, wow. Right, right. Right, because you're looking at it, it looked like yeah, if you're paying out twelve seventy three and she's only paying eleven forty five, look like that's upside down. You're paying to have a house, and that's not a good place to be in. Right. So yeah, so uh, hold on, my phone is ringing here. Let me cut that off. Somebody, the other line. So yeah, so basically, uh, I think let me, let me do a couple of more crunching on these numbers and make sure this makes sense at twelve three, because I had a little bit lower of a number. Let me make sure this would work still for us. But if we're able to work out everything, is this something you think you're wanting to do? Yeah, we would get new insurance that would have us on there. We would keep your name on there as well as an additional insured since your name is on that loan. And so that's why we would have to keep you and your wife on there if that's what's on the loan. So, I mean, it might come down just a little bit. We usually get insurance for around 50 bucks, 45 $50. So I don't know, 85 seems kind of high. Is that a non-owner occupied policy you have? And get it cheaper, but I didn't take the time to do it. And then, uh, 
Right. And so that's in about a year or two, you say? No, uh, I'll have to look at it to see how much it is. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, so um, so long as the wife is on board, long as you're on board, and long as we can figure out some type of thing that uh, to get the tenant out easily and smoothly without any drama, I think we can probably work something out here. Yes. Okay. So I'll call you on this number. So this is the main number. I'll put that on my notes here. Other than that, um, so yeah, check with your wife, see if that works. And like I said, I'm going to crunch some numbers here to make sure this still works good for us. And uh, if, if everything sounds good to her, let me know and we can get the process started. All right. Did you have any other questions or anything for me for now? St. Louis Cash Buyers. I'm actually going to send you a text message with my name and contact information and our website. So you'll actually have all of uh, my contact information as well. Okay. Any other questions for me? No, no, no. All right. Thanks a lot. Wow, it's always some curveballs in this stuff. That's why I'm like, that's why I ask questions over and over and over again. Give him a chance. He sounds like he's honest. He's an honest person. But I like to ask again to make sure. Because I didn't know that, uh, you know, they're paying an additional, what is it? I mean, I did know about the additional part about the uh, the taxes or the, yeah, the taxes. But he paying $85 a month in insurance. So he's paying out $12.73 a month and only getting eleven forty five dollars back in rent. He's upside down. That's got that hurt me just hearing it. You paying twelve seventy three out your pocket every month, and you only getting back eleven forty five. That's negative cash flow. That's pain. That's why you want to turn that knife. You want to get that pain twerked up, worked up. What do you think about that call? Do you think it's something that could be made out of that deal? I don't know. I mean, those numbers looking real tight. I mean, I have a prop in the area there that's uh, I get tw what do I get for that house thirteen hundred. I got one, I get twelve fifty four, and I got another one, I get thirteen hundred. So those numbers are really, 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 really tight. Twelve seventy three is a tight number to be trying to fight, to be honest. And I don't know if there. I mean, the only money there'll be is the down payment that I get from somebody to move into the house. So it's really slim margin, and it's going to cost probably fifteen hundred or so in closing costs to even take down the property if he's willing to do it. So we got fifteen hundred in closing costs. Um, the monthly payment is about twelve seventy three with all that stuff included, the back taxes, the insurance, the principal interest payment as well. That's why I break it all the way down when I ask these people because I want to make sure. And everything, everything they say, we still go back and verify it anyway. We want to trust, but verify. Always check it out. What do you think about this call? Was it something good? You think? You think we're gonna make a deal? Let's see what we got out of here. Killing the game. That's right, Robert. You know it. Stay on them phones. You know it, you know it, you know it. If that video or that call helps you out in any type of way, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, give it a like, and give it a share. We're going to be on a replay when you can share it. Really can't share it out of the woke real estate investors group because it's a private Facebook group where all the OGs hang out. So, all right, let's see here. So, that's that one. I got a couple other leads to call back. Let's see here. This one's a four bedroom, one bath, 936 square feet. They replaced the furnace, the AC, the hot water heater, the dishwasher. It's owner occupied. The mortgage balance is about 61,000. Uh, the monthly payment is about 550 a month. Principal interest, taxes, and insurance. Matter of fact, let me put it on here to make sure it's right. Because that's what I wrote. But let's see what the virtual assistant put down. Because they take all of these calls in. I just go back and call back leads as they come in. So yeah, four bedroom, one bath. Don't know how old the roof is. Electrical plumbing looks good. Central air works. Unfinished basement, not a walkout basement. They no longer need it because they need a smaller house since the kids have moved out already. So they don't need this four bedroom house. Loan balance 61K. 
five fifty a month, and they want an offer. They didn't say what they wanted for the house. So let me pull it up real quick here to see something. Or did I already do this? Look like the ARV is about eighty five, approximately. Approximately eighty five. But I said they owe sixty one thousand. So we're gonna see. I gotta get a number out of them either make them another one. Did he want a price or just wants what he owes? He wants out of the deal. That previous caller, he just wants out. He just say, I'm done with it. Cause like I say, it's the pain of being a landlord. I mean, you know, and I'm not saying it's a bad or a good thing. Just when I was speaking to the guy, you can hear how he's saying it. Oh yeah, they've been in there a year. And if the drain's stopping up, I think they should get that fixed. That's not how it really works being a landlord unless you have it documented that way. Like how I got all mine documented. You're 100% responsible for all of the maintenance and repairs on a property when you buy a house on a rent-to-own program or something from me. That's because I put the paperwork that way. He probably didn't do that. He's dealing with Section 8. I don't think they let you do deals like that with Section 8. That's why I don't do Section 8 or Choice, what is it, Government Choice Voucher, whatever the new thing called, Section 8. So um, he's having the pains of being a disgruntled landlord. Disgruntled landlord hasn't checked his insurance because that's why I asked about, you know, are you doing a non-occupied policy or a owner-occupied policy? A owner-occupied policy costs more than a non-owner-occupied policy. So we only pay about 40, 45 bucks, something like that a month on most houses. He's paying 85. He's paying double. That don't seem like a lot, but that could add up to a lot of money, especially when you catch on the property. That's a lot of money. That's what? $500 a year almost on insurance that you don't need. Good question though. So yeah, that's uh that's that one. So this other deal here that I'm about to call back, they called in from a bandit sign. And they up near the uh let me pull this house up, see what area it is. 63114, the hottest zip code in St. Louis, one of the hottest. Let's see what we got here. Look like a cute house. The zestimate is eighty two thousand. You know, a zestimate ain't nothing but a estimate with the Z in front of it. A estimate with the Z in front, that's the zestimate, 82. House built in 1947. So, yeah, they got some houses over there, so 5, 75, 75. But those are two and three bedrooms. This house is a four bedroom. So, let's see what we can come up with. Let's see if we can get them on the phone. And her name is Joyce. I already bought a house from a Joyce. Let's see if we can buy another one. 314. It might be too late to call them because it said to call them after 9 a.m. Hope it ain't too late. Okay. All calls are recorded for quality and training purposes. On to the next one. Hello? Hi, yes, is this Joyce? Yes, this is. Hi, Joyce, this is Chris with St. Louis Cash Buyers. You spoke to my assistant in regards to your house. Uh, how are you today? I am doing great. How are you? All is well. Did I catch you at a good time? Yes, sir. Great. So that's good. I was uh, looking over the notes here, and it looks like it's a pretty decent house here. Um, let's see here. Four bedroom, one bath. Uh, let's see here. And it looked like you did some a lot of renovations to it, the furnace and everything, huh? Yes. I thought it was all good. They inspected the house. The bank inspected the house. Everybody seemed to inspect it and say it was fine. The only thing they found wrong with it was the hot water heater, so those people replaced it. Yep, yep, so that's good. And it also says that you're selling because you're trying to move into a smaller house. Is that correct? Well, I don't need stairs. I'm having more and more difficulty getting up and down. My kids moved up, so I don't need the two rooms upstairs anymore. And I think that they need to do a lot of them all on one floor. Oh, okay. So that makes sense. No reason to go up steps if you don't need to, right? Well, that's right. Have you already found a place that you're going to be moving to and things like that? Or? Well, no. We've been kind of looking and we gave them a price range. They keep sending us up to what we're going to do. Yeah. Well, we have to get rid of this place or how much we would get out of it so we know what we'd have to work with. 
Right, right. That makes sense. And so have you uh, have you thought about listing the house with a real estate agent or something like that? Oh, yeah, we actually just moved our office right around the corner there. We're on Woodson. Okay. Yep, so we're, we're, we're your we new neighbors now. I know that's right. So yeah, so if we were to buy your house for cash, we would buy it, pay any closing costs, and uh, there's no real estate commissions or fees or anything like that. So the price we'd agree to, that would be the price that you would actually get. Did you have an idea what you were to get for your house? Ah, I know that's right. So you're trying to get a million dollars, huh? Oh, yeah, I know I can get a million dollars for this place. So. <laughs> At least. For half a million, you know, I'm not going to get that much for half a million. I know, me too. So I wish we could. One day the market's going to come back here in St. Louis. It's going to be good like that. <laughs> it comes, it comes, it does good, it does bad. Right, right. I mean, I planned on moving in here for the rest of my life, but when my kids moved out, Karen left me two rooms upstairs and moved again. I can't go up. So you so you just need a smaller place altogether. Well, I mean, two bedrooms with three is fine. I just don't need an upstairs, and I don't want a basement anymore. Oh, so you know everything you want already. You got it all figured out. Yep. I mean, an extra bedroom would be great for guests, but if I don't have guests, so, but I don't have any place to put it. Right. Well, I have one bedroom down here, but it's a junk room right now. Cause we're, oh, I did tell you we waterproofed the basement, too. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Was there water getting in downstairs or something? Oh, yeah. According to them, they never knew it. According to the people in the basement, they should have known it. But, you know, they didn't know that there was water in the basement. Right. It happens. So, yeah, okay. So, what what do you think the house would appraise for? I think at least 75 even though they're basing my taxes on 85 Really? Wow. Yeah. What uh what township is this supposed to be in? Breckenridge. So Breckenridge, that's why they want all the money. <laughs> yeah. And they just redid the house across the street that was in worse shape than anything because it had the outside messed up and everything else. But they just it didn't have people moving. They were working on the house, two houses down. They made the outside look good. I don't know what happened. They just quit working. Right, right. So, um, it looks like here, so you think it appraised and about seventy five, so so you've seen some houses around there probably selling around that amount too? Eh, there's some that don't work that much for sure. I mm. mean they were actually seventy five and they were selling for about seventy eight, seventy nine. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so they Right. So, well, we do buy houses a couple of different ways. Like I told you, we buy them all outright for cash in any condition, regardless of how much you owe. We also buy them in another way where we uh, are actually be able to create something more creative where we can get you a higher purchase price. Because when we buy for cash, it's, it's kind of cheap. I'll be honest with you. We, we buy them on a discount. We don't buy them all cash for full retail because okay. we wouldn't make any money that way. We would lose money that way, as a matter of fact, because, you know, there's a price well, to money. Yeah, yeah, not a problem. And so, did you have an idea what you're like trying to walk away with at closing? Um, we were at least wanting about five thousand or so, so we can help move the, you know, get moved and you know, get some stuff set up and things going and you know. Yeah. I'm just okay. wanting to pay up to maybe five or six thousand dollars extra. Right. Right.
right. Okay. So, well, there's a way that we can do that. Uh, the only thing is, uh, would you consider taking a monthly payment for your house until it was paid off in full? So basically, we would uh, buy the house from you. We would close just like any other real estate transaction. We close through a real estate attorney and the local title company. So everything's in writing and disclosed. Uh, we would actually buy the house. Uh, we would be responsible for all of the maintenance and repairs for the property going forward. Uh, the only thing is that the loan will stay in your name temporarily until sometime in the future till we get it cashed out. Uh, we actually work with people that we help get qualified for loans and things like that. And so they may need to, uh, you know, either have time on a job or their debt to income ratio is out of whack or something like that. But after working with us over a little bit of time, we help them get qualified and they actually go cash it out, pay off your loan. And we make money off the back end of the deal on that too. But it doesn't cost you anything. Uh -huh. Right, right. So, so, so we can we can actually structure the deal in a way so that you can actually have uh, we would have the attorney draft a document to show that you know if you were to sell your house this way that you would basically uh, have some type of income coming in to wash out your debt to income ratio so that you could possibly qualify for a loan again on another house. So yeah, it wouldn't count as income per se. It would only show that there's income to come in to take out your, to not mess up your debt to income ratio because it would show that the debt has been taken care of and it's not, that you don't own the house. It would basically show that you don't own that house. Okay. So I it would. Don't know how the bank would look at that. Yeah, so. Well, we're out to make money. That's true. But we're also here to help you out in the best way, you know, possible. We can get you an actual cash offer as well as a, an offer like this. You know, well, I can get you a couple of different offers and you can take a look at it and see what would work best for you. But, uh, you know, it, it's just, you know, I like to let you know what options you do have available. Because, you know, a lot of people just say, you got to do it this way. Well, you might have more than one way that you can do it. We want to do the way that works best for you in your situation. Yeah, so we do it in a... That's true. I, I agree. Things do happen, and that's why we do it in a way that protects you in the deal. Like I said, that's why we close through a real estate attorney and through the title company, and they make it so that you're protected in the deal. In the event we don't pay or something happens in life, you could always foreclose and take the house back. But it would, it would be in our best interest to do the right thing because we're actually investing in the property. So it wouldn't do us any good to want to not pay the payment and give the house back or anything like that. We want to actually get the house cashed out because that's where we're going to make money at in the future. But you don't have to come out of pocket for anything. It actually uh, helps you go ahead and sell the house, get into another place, and uh, it kind of helps move you along pretty quickly. Okay. So, uh, well, I Yeah, let me ask you this, Joyce. Is there a time that I can call back when you and your husband uh, is going to be available? He'll be home all day tomorrow. Um, I wouldn't call till after 10. After so 10? We won't call you too early. And what was his name? Dan, is that right? All right, Dan the man. So what I'll do is uh, try to give you a call tomorrow so I can make sure I answer any of his questions as well. Um, also, I'll get you something over in writing to show, uh, you know, what, what we're talking about here so that you can have it so you can look over it as well. Other than that, Joyce, did you have any other questions or anything for me before I let you go?
Exactly. Yeah, we pay it directly to the mortgage company, so it wouldn't be income for you at all. So, like I said, we can I can show you all of it. It's pretty simple. We do these types of deals all the time. It's actually uh, you know one of the better ways to sell it because you can get a higher purchase price that way as well. So, so yeah, other than that, uh, I'll be back in contact with you uh, sometime tomorrow. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. I appreciate you All right, you have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See, people are reasonable. I like reasonable people like her. Where they're not like, oh, hell. See, because she originally said no. When it came in as a lead, she said no, we wouldn't take a uh, monthly payment or anything like that until they're paid off in full or wouldn't do anything creative. But as you see, as I go back to explain it, some people say no initially. When you go back and re-ask it, re-explain it, re-pitch it, they might say yes. Did that video help you out? Did that call help you out? Thumbs up. Let me know you're here. Who all we got up in here? You say, uh, Laura say, I like this Joyce lady. <laughs> Andrea, Ari Andrea says, ears, you're hearing it. You're doing a, well, how they do it? Hulk Hogan on them. Yeah, brother. Hulkamania. <laughs> all right. Did he want full price or just, oh, okay, that was earlier. Hello, Chris. In some municipalities, it is illegal to not accept Section 8 application, such as NYC. Wow, Daniel, that's cool. Too bad I'm not looking to rent anything to a Section 8 tenant. And that's why I'm not in one of those crazy blue states. New York, California, those places, keep it. That's why I like the Midwest, because the Midwest best, we get to do kind of almost what we want to do. That's why I like it. The Midwest got the best real estate market because we don't have all those crazy rules and people telling you what you can and cannot do. You can't do this. You can't do that. We're not looking for a tenant. We're looking for a tenant buyer. So we don't take any Section 8 tenants. Now, I don't know how they're going to get that tenant out. He said they can be out in 30 days, but, you know, that's beyond my knowledge base. I don't know anything about any of that. So I let them figure it out. Any other questions, comments, concerns about any of that? Let me see. Did I have another lead in here? Let me put her as in uh, currently into negotiations. Spoke to. Spoke to. We'll call back to speak with hubby. Hubby man. Hubby man. Hubby man. Hubby man. All right. Let's see here. We got that. And I think there was one more lead in here. Did you learn anything on that call? What's up, Mary Brooks? Where you been at, Mary? Yes, 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 yes. All right. Fast. I got you. Let's see here. So that was Joyce. She was nice. And it's reasonable. She said she only trying to get about 5000 Might be able to get that lower. Let's get it at 3000 4000 something. So so basically, what I would do on this house, if everything looks good, like they say the house looks good, uh, they supposedly did all these renovations to this house and they're ready to move out of it, I would take over that five fifty a month payment, give them three, four, five, six thousand dollars, pay the closing costs. I might be in it all in for about six, seven, eight thousand. Get a tenant buyer in there for hopefully at least ten. They would have to put at least ten unless I want to be upside down. Or I would either have to get a lower deal from her. And uh put a tenant buyer in there, get them in at eight fifty, something like that. Cause that's a four bedroom house. I know it from more than five fifty. It gotta be more than that at a four bedroom house. It gotta be about eight, nine, maybe even a thousand dollars, maybe more. I don't know. Matter of fact, what did it say on here for the rent? It say nine fifty on the rent estimate, and I think I can get more than a tenant buyer. Let's get them at a thousand. So that's a potential four fifty a month passive cash flow deal on a house. I'll have nothing in. So that would be my plan on that particular deal. So we'll call her tomorrow. Uh, let's see what this other lead was. <sighs> uh oh, it's another create deal. As a matter of fact. I think this lead came to me before from somebody else, but I never spoke to him. I knew about this house before from a real estate agent. That's why you got to be connected with the agents. Not too many deals come across town I don't know about. So I know they've been trying to sell this house for a while. It's up in 63135, which I think is, uh, is that Ferguson? Oh, they said call them between 9 and 5, so I can't even call them right now anyway. I'll call them tomorrow between 9 and 5 because it's almost 7.05 in the p.m. They said uh, three bedroom, one bath. I know they tried to sell it because I've seen this house before. I remember the pictures of it. 
So any other questions, comments, concerns before I get up out of here and do some more woke stuff? That it nothing that nothing and sounds really good it sounds really good great so yeah that's how i would structure that deal how would you structure a three house deal each individual deal each deal get its own play its own playbook its own entry strategy its own exit strategy my go-to exit strategy gonna always be that lease with option to buy because i'm gonna get that down payment non-refundable on the front end passive cash flow each and every month while i wait and then if they decide to cash me out sometime in the future. Another big chunk of money on the back end, as long as I sold it for more than I bought it for. But if they don't buy it, they move out. Oh, boo hoo. I get to go find another tenant buyer and get another non refundable on a house after getting a passive flow and a non refundable from the first person. So it all depends. That's my go to exit strategy, followed by. Uh, a, a wholesale deal you can always wholesale we actually closing a deal tomorrow as a matter of fact friday I'm supposed to be closing two deals i might be closing on a deal with the tenant bar and i am closing a wholesale deal tomorrow wholesale deal y'all might have saw that never met the buyer never met the seller never been to the house virtual 100 virtual this is gonna be my first 100 virtual deal did the whole deal from this chair right here that's crazy that's crazy you got to love virtual real estate, virtual wholesaling. I bought a house virtually too before. I bought a house from a guy I never met. But I think that's going to do it, y'all. Because let me see. We've been out here 42 minutes. This is quite long, yo. How do you find those types of tenants? Uh, tenant buyers? Actually, tenant buyers are all over the place. Uh, there are people that are looking to buy houses but cannot qualify for a loan at this time. We cater to those people. They have to have a down payment to move into any of our homes. Without a down payment, they cannot move in because that down payment is what's going to help secure us in the deal. They have some skin in the game. No skin in the game, they can't play. So we uh, find them through signs on the side of the road that say rent to own property or uh, buy a house, seller financed. Uh, you could say uh, rent to own, no banks needed. Uh, things like that. Those are keywords you would put on your signage and a phone number and an arrow or put it in front of the house. Uh, you can put it on Zillow, the number one place to put it on Zillow. Claim the property on Zillow. Uh, put the listing up there. Uh, Craigslist, offer up, Facebook, let go. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, networking, asking people, talking to people. But those signs are going to do you so many, so much good. The demand and it's not as bigger than the supply, especially when you start getting up into uh, good neighborhoods. In fact, if you all watched the video from last night, the lady that was uh, out in St. Charles that had the house worth three twenty, dollars and were, they wanted to sell her house for the two eighty dollars they owed on it, they said, yeah, they want to do it. So we just got to get the paperwork done and the process with that. That house is out in actually Newtown, St. Louis. New, uh, Newtown, St. Charles is where that house is. And uh, yeah, they, they agreed to everything verbally. So now we just got to get the paperwork in, get the pictures and video and start marketing the property and get a tenant buyer in there and get a non-refundable from somebody. So a brand new house that was built in 28. Good question. Where you get the virtual lead from? Um, That lead came from, he found us on a website. Actually, he came in right off of our website. So we do a lot of search engine out to come up number one if you look up in uh on google sell my house for cash fast st louis or anything like that we come up on the first page baby we're up on we're not number one we're not number two we're not number six but we're about seven or eight we've been floating we've been creeping up on lounge because i don't know what they're doing but we're on the first page for several key terms search engine optimization is important and for every lead source that i use on a regular basis, get leads woke real estate.com and go to the marketing page you'll see the links in the description of the bio of this uh, video here. WokeRealEstate.com. Go to the marketing page. Gives you a full outline list of all of the tools we use to get the leads coming in. We get about six to eight leads a week, which is okay. I'm gonna pluck two deals out of there each week. That'd be my goal. My goal was to get three contracts this week. We got two working on the third one now. So, good good question. You ever do bond for deed? No, I do not. I usually try to get the deed. When I buy the house, I want the deed. I always want the deed. I don't have any reason to do any bond for deeds or anything like that. Now, selling it, that's possible as well to do it 
that way. Like I said, my go-to is always that lease option. It's so much cleaner, so much better. I can evict the person and get them out of there. I don't have to foreclose on them. I can get them up out of there quick, 21 to 30 days or so, as long as it ain't no long process. Get them up out of there. I can evict the person quicker than I can foreclose on them. Especially those of you that are in different states that have different laws. It can cost you a pretty penny and attorney fees and all that. It can be some costly entanglements to get a person up out of a house on a foreclosure. So I don't do that. I want to evict a mug. This is great. Thank you, Lucy. I appreciate you. So like I said, if this video gave you any kind of value, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it some hearts. Give it some mean faces. Give it some emojis. Give it something and leave a smart comment. Even if you're watching on the replay, leave a smart comment. Let me know you was here. Let me know you learned something. If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, post it in the comments. Post in the comments what you learned. Did you learn something? Let me know what you learned. Other than that, I'm about to get up out of here and do some more woke stuff. Follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. That's Snapchat, that's Twitter, that's Instagram, that's Facebook, that's YouTube. And the woke real estate.com has over 120 videos now. We're up to 120 plus videos, free real estate training to learn all this stuff from the rooter to the tutor. Get in there and learn it. No excuse. I want to hear no excuses. The information is here. This is information age. You must take a personal responsibility to educate yourself or learn from somebody. But to get the basics down, you may not know all the ins and outs on how to do the paperwork or how to speak to people and how to do all this. You can do all that, but to get a basic understanding and knowledge, it's up to you to do that. Once you get that basic understanding and knowledge, then come holler at me and get you some coaching. Coaching, get that at wolfrealestate.com once you understand some of the basics because then I can help you work out the stuff that you don't understand and things like that. Hold your hand through the deal, help you talk to sellers, all of that good stuff. Okay, but yep. Don't forget, uh, public education will earn you a living while a self-education will earn you a fortune. Do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me. Peace out.